How's it going today? This is Kurt from City Campus, and we're starting a little series this week requested by one of our folks uh, about church law. And what is that? What is all this law stuff, you know? Um, I want to kind of do a little introduction right here. Uh, many of us are reading a chronological reading of the Bible right now, um, some of my friends and I anyway. And we're doing a very intensive read of, you know, like those first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, uh, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, right? So we've got those five books, and they're full of laws. Some laws are like pretty standard, like don't kill and don't steal. And, you know, and those have all been repeated in our civil laws. You know, I'm not allowed to steal from people or kill from kill people, those are against the law. Some of those are not repeated in our uh, civil laws. In fact, some of them were, like it used to be against the law, it was a crime to commit adultery or, you know, or to cheat or to even, you know, to cheat on your wife or things like that. Those things were against the law. They're not really against the law anymore. They're, they're still bad. And we're gonna talk about that stuff. Um, but there's lots of laws that we see in in there that are not necessarily civil laws today. Like there's all kinds of laws about skin diseases and how to eat and uh, how to uh, consecrate a, a, an altar or things of that sort. And I was asked, you know, what are those? Do those apply to us as Christians? Do they apply to us? How do they apply to us? And, my answer was basically that, yeah, they do kind of apply to us and I can give you some ideas how, but I can't do it like in this five minute conversation. So we're gonna do it over the course of this week, I hope. Um, I'm, I'm hoping it'll be done in five days, we'll see. <laughs> and then we'll get back to our Fruit of the Spirit uh, study that we've been doing. Uh, so I hope you'll subscribe. I'm sure it's right here, or is it right here? I can't remember, it's one of those two places. And I um, hope you'll subscribe and take a few seconds to uh, just hit the bell button and you'll get all these recordings uh, when, when they drop onto YouTube. Uh, let's go ahead and start with our little series, which has got a really long name. So I decided to call it Old Testament Laws and New Testament Faith. How do they apply? I'm not even sure if that's the right name, but it's as good enough as one for me today. And I wanted to start by telling you that the Old Testament laws were created to teach us how to live, to teach us how to live. Now, one thing that um, I was taught is that you always interpret the Old Testament with the new. Carl Summers taught me that. Um, my, my great mentor, George Trueblood, taught me this and many others. I've heard this from many other teachers and, and, I, and I believe it to be true as well. And so I recommend it. Don't ever take the New Testament, the Old Testament and go, oh yeah, this is something that we should apply. Let's apply it in the light of the New Testament. And so when you see things in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy or other places in the Old Testament, you know what they're for. And I wanna go with Galatians 3.25. 323 to 25 is a key passage to start us off this week. Before the way of Christ, the way of faith in Christ was available to us, we were placed under guard by the law. We were kept in protective custody, so to speak, until the way of faith was revealed. Now, let me put it another way. The law was our guardian until Christ came. It protected us until we could be made right with God through faith. And now that the way of faith has come, we no longer need the law as our guardian. Now, this was taught by our uh, by the Apostle Paul. He was really trying to understand and explain why Christians were not under the law, primarily there were some people that were saying Christians had to become Jews before they could become Christians. And Paul's explaining that he, that that's not needed. He's kind of saying while the law was and continues to be important, 
It's fulfilled in Christ, and we don't need it to go to heaven. And that's a key topic in the book of Romans and the book of Galatians, to some extent in some of the other books, the book of Hebrews as well. But those, because Christians and Jews made, you know, Jews made up the early part of the church. And when those people who were not Jews, the Jewish people call those people Gentiles, when they started to come into the church, it became a little confusing and we had to understand it. And those spirit-led apostles like Paul and Peter um, had to understand that and explain that to every other believer. It's the same way that the Bible has to explain it to us now. We just have to be able to read some of those passages and understand. And I want you to know, start it off with Jesus talking about it. Jesus got asked the same thing. And we're going to use that as our theme verse for this week or, you know, for this week of things. And he got asked this. He, he was, he was uh, accused of being a lawbreaker because he healed on the Sabbath, because he didn't do some of the ritual law things that uh, Pharisees and other people were doing. And he said, don't miss, this is in Matthew 5. It's in the Sermon on the Mount. So, you know, you can kind of go look that up if you want to. And again, you probably already know, I use the New Living Translation for all of my scripture references. That's what that we just read from the New Living Translation. Unless for some reason I like another translation better, I might use it for one or two verses, but not very often. Um, don't misunderstand why I have come, Jesus said. I didn't come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No. I came to accomplish their purpose. You see, as Jesus is telling you, he came to accomplish the purpose of the law, which was to make us holy, was to guard us, like we just read about, right? I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. And again, I think we just read about how its purpose was achieved. So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you'll be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, I could have stopped at 18, you see. Could have stopped right there. Because that's really it. This 19 is really for the time that Jesus is alive in. He has not yet accomplished the purpose of the law. He has not made you and I holy when he is talking here. That doesn't happen until he's crucified, buried, and raised from the dead by God. Until that happens, he hasn't accomplished their purpose. And so verse 19 is for the time that Jesus is alive. Verse 18 is talking about what happens after Jesus accomplishes the purpose of the law. And again, the Galatians uh, 3 passage that we just read is all about this as well. So this will be the longest one of these, um, but um, I may refer back to it in all the other lessons. So it's really important that we understand that Jesus came to accomplish the law, not to make the law for everybody. And, you know, and we understand that some of the law has come through into, um, into a law, state law or federal law in various countries, right, including the United States. In the same way that it was law in the theocracy that was Israel. But most of the law has been accomplished. Now, does that not mean that it's not useful for us today? Well, no. And we're going to talk about some of those things as the week goes on. And some of this stuff will be pretty interpretive on my part. So um, you can listen. You can go, oh, well, I, I agree with that. Or, no, oh, I don't agree with that at all. And, and that's a good time to kind of go down in the comments down below, leave a message, and let's talk about that. So it's okay with me. Um, I don't expect you to just accept everything I say. Um, 
and uh, you can certainly uh, make a comment about it. You can leave me a message. You'll see as we leave uh, the email address, so you can leave a comment. I'm sorry this one was so long, but I just wanted to kind of set the stage for it. Uh, let's pray, and then we'll get you on to your day. God, we love you. Uh, we love your law. Um, we don't always understand what all the pieces and parts are, but uh, we do uh, understand that you have a purpose in it, even today for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, guys, it's going to be kind of an interesting week. Um, we're going to talk about some couple of interesting laws tomorrow and see if we can uh, make some application to uh, today. And um, let's, uh, let's, let's get into that tomorrow. So we'll talk to you later.